well. Agenda tonight, we have a public forum. We have two appointments. New business, we have the review and approval of change to the town special legislative request for liquor licensing. We brought an interfaith council to discuss co-sponsorship by Dunstable Board of Selectmen of an event on the Broughton Board of Selectmen and Broughton Dunstable Regional School District. We have um, the 350th anniversary celebration committee request for a donation account. Discussion with the fire department next steps. And we have on the agenda an executive session, but we probably are not going to need that. Mm -hmm. So then we have one set of minutes of September 28th. So we'll start with public forums. Anyone here to discuss anything that is not specifically on the agenda? Being none. I'll jump to appointments. The first one we have is for the 350th anniversary celebration committee. We have Deborah Courtney. Yes, she's replacing Catherine Reynolds, who has resigned, as well as Tiffany Knopf and Tracy O'Neill. So I'll have the appointments for you for both of us. Oh, three of you time. Yeah, there's a total of three leaving the committee. Didn't they just appoint these ones? Yeah. Yeah. So what's that? Didn't we, didn't we just appoint these folks? We did some of them, yes. So, uh, too much of a time for I'm not certain, John. Um, it turns out that they didn't seem to be able to make meetings, et cetera, and so they're still not very smart for them. So, I'm happy that it's happening now so that we can uh, get the type of people who are able to and interested in doing the work to continue on that. Cool. Yeah. So, you're here to speak on behalf of Deborah Courtney. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm here. Okay, I don't know her. She's good people. Yeah. Yeah, pretty well. So we had three meeting chairs. Yes. Okay, and you got one new one. Yep, but the committee is eager to replace all three of them. They've got people who are interested in. Um, <clears throat> my understanding is Deborah Courtney is very eager to join as are others. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to turn the point there for me to the 350th anniversary <coughs> celebration. Any further discussion? And all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Deborah. You're right there. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. um, next up is we have a new police officer, Jack Wagner. She's yes. here. To yeah, I'd like to uh, thank the board for taking time to be with us tonight and to allow me to introduce Jack. Um, and we're requesting his appointment. Jack has come to us, and, and what this position will be is due to the override vote this spring. Uh, we were currently looking for the right fit, the right employee, and eventually we were fortunate enough to be able to locate Jack. Um, Jack's done some training with us. Liked by the people already, seems like he's going to do a really good fit. Um, he'll be getting sworn in tomorrow by Carol. We'll make sure that she's around and he'll stop firearms. Um, Jack is also with him, brought his sister, his mom, his girlfriend, and his dad, who is currently a lieutenant in Kingsborough. And that's the other thing that's really great about this hire is that uh, Jack comes from a local community, one town away, you know, really, really close access, not a big commute. So hopefully, hopefully we can have some retention. Where is he in like the training? He's gone through the academy. What's the background? So Jack went to the academy, graduated in December 2020. Perfect. Yeah. So Jack's been out for a little bit. Um, you know, just searching for work and a job. Yeah. Anything you'd like to say about yourself, Jack? No, I'd just like to say it's a pleasure to meet you guys. I'm just happy to be here and be able to start working for the time of school as soon as possible. Any family members have any objections or any <laughs> <laughs> words of support? <laughs> Flip the script, right? <laughs> All right. So, Madam Chair, I will that be appoint uh, Mr. Jack Wagner to the role of police officer for Crown Hospital. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, Thank you, guys. Thank you. Nice to see you. Welcome aboard. Thank you. You speak your talk. Thank you.
Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Chief. Well, stay safe. Okay, new you? business. Um, review wow. and approval of changes to the town's <laughs> special legislative request for the liquor licensing. I feel we're in Groundhog Day with this. We are. It, is, it is a bit like Groundhog Day. So uh, we were asked by uh, Carrington's office to do this for a third time. And uh, I responded to that request and said, hey, you know, we just did this in July. I don't see anything changing posted. So what's going on? Yeah. And we said they were going to do so I don't think we need to do anything at this time. Okay. When she was here, was that last time? Like she yeah, said that coming ago. Thursday, if they were going to have something on like her, I thought that was like good to go. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 So the, they keep talking about the same changes that have been requested by the CPC from the, the professional licensing committee of the legislature. So those changes were made in June. And we voted on them then. And then Sheila asked us to vote again. Um, again at the end of July. So we right. voted on it twice. And I don't see any more changes when I go on the legislature's website. The last revision date was June 1. And we couldn't tell what it was from the beginning. And we, and we didn't know exactly. So we didn't know what the substantial changes were at the beginning. Of it. And like, why are we voting on this a third time? We can't tell us what the changes are. Because right now, she's going back to figure out what the action is to do this again. Is this abnormal? No, just it's not normal. And you actually only need to approve substantive changes. Okay. And so a substantive change is pretty significant. Like if they said, well, you can't be called, that's substantive. But okay. Messing around with the word and the word stuff is not substantive. It's just like conjecture. It's just conjecture. Yeah. It is, absolutely. Are there other towns that have recently gone from being dry? To what we tried to achieve, uh, I have to similar, similar obstacles. Like, yeah, I'd have to look. I mean, there weren't there weren't many left to begin with. I think there were three or four. For good reason, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. It's just yeah. it's it's a marathon. Well, we you just got an inquiry, or Jake, you saw that the inquiry. Someone asking about there was yeah one of from three. the from the state house and news service, they were asking us an opinion on apparently the general court was looking at changing something to do with happy hour rules. Yeah. And they were asking what our comment was as a dry community. And my response basically was, well, technically we're trying not to be dry anymore. Yeah. And it was sort of, well, what did the voters think? I was responding, well, I don't really think the voters noticed we were a dry community. Yeah. Because you could always buy liquor outside of town, bring it home and consume it. So most people, unless they wanted to do something in public, like have a wedding on the town hall, weren't really aware. Yeah. Okay. I don't think it's normal. Yeah, this no, just seems way too arduous for what. Well, that seems to be the case for the past few things we've had to get. Yes. I mean, I thought it was positive with her here and her assistant, but I guess that was why. <laughs> uh, whatever it is that's happening is fresh. Yeah. All right, so we can continue on. Um, next we have is a discussion regarding the, the drought in the fifth council. Where do I stay? You can sit up here if you like. Okay. Um, morning, thank you. <laughs> Hi. My name is Amy Deegan. I've lived in Groton for 30 years. Both my girls went through the Groton Dunstable Regional School District. And I'm here as the co president of the Groton Interfaith Council. Uh, I'm just going to read you our mission so you know who we are. We foster understanding, respect, and justice and peace amongst people of a variety of religious and faith traditions through worship, fellowship, education, service, and the hosting of community events. So we have planned a community event. Um, it got bumped a year because of COVID, but it is planned for November 9th at seven o'clock in the PAC in the middle school. And it's, we're showing a movie called um, Etched in Glass, The Legend of Steve Ross. So Steve Ross was a Holocaust survivor um, and he, I think he became an orphan by the age of nine, was in 10 concentration camps, horrendous story. Um, and when he was liberated in Dachau, a American soldier gave him a little, gave him a hug and a little American flag. And so he spent his life dedicated to helping children at risk and find who gave him this flag. 
And he was behind the uh, memorial in Boston. So he was the one that dreamed of a memorial and made it happen. So very special guy, unfortunately, he passed away last year. Um, but I'm having the writer, producer, director, Roger Lyons come. Actually, he just told me yesterday he's gonna be doing it by Zoom because he's not comfortable with mm -hmm. a large crowd. Um, I'm hoping that we're gonna get a good turnout. We've already been co-sponsored by the Groton Police Department and the Groton um, Select Board. So I'm coming to you to see if you would co-sponsor. I'm not looking for money. I'm just looking for support um, and getting people out to see this movie. Um, I have a call into the police chief of Dunstable as well. So, but I haven't heard back from you. Oh, I, I, don't, I, don't even I don't know if Chief Luke was, was called you today. He, said he, he did. He called me today okay. and said you would be here. And I said, "Oh, that's yeah." So that's me. me. No, no problem. We, we, uh, of course, the police department supports this kind of okay. movement and organization Great. and anything Thank of you. that nature. So. Sorry, I didn't recognize. Oh. It must have been the mask. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, um, so it's a very special movie. It really touched my heart. And I just think that there's, I'm a Holocaust educator. I think that a lot of people don't really understand what happened during the Holocaust. And in the recent uh, graffiti at the middle of the school, um, I think we're up to three or four swastikas at this point and racial um, graffiti. I really feel like this is, the timing of this is kind of unique and that we were planning this anyway and then with all this recent graffiti. So I feel it's an important um, movie and I'm asking that you co-sponsor with us. So I don't know if you need me to leave the room and you can discuss it or you can go back to me or however you want to do it. I have a link that I sent with the request which shows about a 60 minute interview with the son of Stephen Ross and the uh, writer, producer, director this coming, Roger Lyons. And I think it was on GBH and it really gives a nice background of what his life was like and what he did. And, how important it was to Boston. And I think also having the memorial right here, I know the eighth grade goes to the Holocaust Museum every year in DC or has been except for during COVID. Um, here's a, a way that they'll know what's behind this memorial right in our own backyard in Boston. So any questions? I think it's something important to support. Um, can, in terms of co-sponsoring, are you hoping that the select board will push out a message to the town? Yes. What's sort of the goal of- Whatever way you can help to publicize it. <clears throat> okay. I'll take whatever way is possible. Um, yeah, a, a news announcement on the website that <clears throat> pushes out to people who subscribe to it. Yeah, I think that would be nice to do. Uh, sure. you know, next door, we can always link it back. And then I think we're due for one of our quarterly sort of what's happening in town anyway. Yeah. Right? So maybe we could also put it into that. Right. Something we, you know, we do quarterly anyway. So I'll give us way to sort of say, hey, this is an event that's been hosted by our regional talent. Let's support it and be active. So, that would be great. Um, I think that's... Do you no, guys... I agree. I think it's a... Great. Yeah. No, I'm fine. Yeah. You don't mind getting a relation to Josh? Uh, wife. <laughs> so 34 years I'm dated for eight years before that so I know I'm pretty well yeah so he also plows some of your roads so. he's not bad yeah 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 and this graffiti thing is at the army school yes unfortunately recently yes um I think there's been three in the past two weeks yeah. am I That's right correct yes yeah. um yeah yeah, I think the education is probably critical when things like this are occurring. So. Yeah, I'm working on the school uh, committee that I'm seeing how I could, they could help us, but they have a lot of rules. So, yeah, we'll see. Well, yeah, I think I'm in really favor of certainly supporting it. And, Great. Thank uh, you. We'll find a way to, if you guys do have like a, I guess I think like a sentence blurb to say this is an event and sure. there's a link to it that we can post on Absolutely. our website. If you want to email that, you can send okay. it to us and we can. Yeah, we're putting together a flyer. It's just waiting tomorrow night as a school committee. So okay. I was just waiting to see, be able to list all of us yeah. uh, sponsors. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, I will get that to you okay. by the end of the week. I think you're already, you're already emailing that to Jake. So just send yeah. it again. And we'll Jake, make sure we'll get, get it that way. Oh, okay. cool. Do you have a card? Sure. I do just so make a motion okay. to say, we support the GIC effort to yeah. support this event. I made a motion to support the GIC effort for this November 9th. Aye. 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 Well, I hope I see you there too. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. What time is the event? It's seven to nine.
seven to eight thirty. Seven to eight thirty. The movies, yeah. If the movie's about an hour, and then we'll have questions. And it's going to be out of school. It's right now. It's um, it's the middle school, the, the path. Yeah. So um, unless we decide to do it by Zoom, but right now. Uh, Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, 350th anniversary of celebration community request for a donation account. We're looking to set up a dedicated account for that specifically. We are looking to do that. Um, the in order to raise funds, uh, we need to place to put those funds, and because they're not our funds, we are not going to put it in our accounts. So right. we just need to place to put money as we raise it. Um, and we would, we are, we're in the planning process, and there's a lot um, in the works for that. Uh, not just for like a day, but for we're going to be stretching out some events over that whole year. So we're very excited about what's coming up. But in order to do those things, we need to get our fundraise now, and so. Um, we need an account for those ones. I think that makes sense. It's clean yeah. yeah. house. Uh, well, so you can establish a donation for and dispensing the checks yeah. on it. It goes with the normal warrant process. That's what the summer concert series does. They have the donation accounts and they bring the money to Bonnie. She deposits it into the account. And then when they want to spend money, they get the bills to the account like usual. It goes through the warrant and it's signed by the chair. Okay, I'm, I'm fine. I'm yeah, it makes sense. It makes it keep it clean. So, um, questions. Who do we give money to when it comes in? <laughs> you would bring it to the, you bring it to the treasurer of Dr. Bonnie or Cardell. You'll want like right, the organizations to write you a check you want it to say Tom Dunstable, and then like the memo can say that it's okay. you know, for the celebration. Right. And then you'll want to bring it in and you'll turn it over as they say to the treasurer collection. Um another question that I was asked to bring up is is it possible to um, link like a Venmo or something to this account so we could take electronic payments to the. Unfortunately, no. You'd have to work with the treasurer and collector uh, in regards to an online payment option with our banking uh, partner, you may, but I don't know if they could set something up for like this. Okay. It's something to talk to the treasurer about. Sure. Um, one other quick question one of the treasurer's apps. Uh, she's generally here on Mondays from noon to five, and then eight a.m. Tuesday through Thursday, eight a.m. till one p.m. two p.m. on Wednesdays. Oh, I'll okay. I'll make the points up. Right. Thank you. Okay. You need a motion for that too. Yes. Is there a motion to establish a donation account with the best of the treasurer for the American Christmas celebration? Second. In favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, good. <clears throat> okay, last thing. Um, the special fire department, next steps. Uh, so, earlier this morning, I received a resignation letter from Chief Murray, uh, effective 30 days from now. Given the posting on Facebook a couple of weeks ago, he seems to be discouraged with continuing. And, uh, fortunately, he's tendered his resignation. It's disappointing to me. I think he's accomplished a lot while he's here. I wish that he uh, would be able to stay out and finish his contract at the end of the year, but there's really nothing I can do except respect his decision. And thank you for the work that he's done while he's here. So. Yes, I agree. I'm, I'm bothered by the resignation as well. I agree. I think he's done a lot of good in the department. It's unfortunate that this. This has happened, um, but again, it's his choice. I would have preferred to see him finish out the contract, but he gave us reasons for why he wasn't doing that. So, um, here's what it is. Yeah, so, in terms of next steps, uh, one of the things I, I talked to Karen at the weekend, uh, yeah, so we since we've been talking, we started talking with Brian a few weeks back about regionalization. And so, you know, we had this idea of, well, should we approach Brock and see if it would be the interim? Um, 
I think that could work, but I think that has a downside. So I, I haven't reached out to them about it yet um, as a kind of fun. When we, when we did the department tour, I think one of the next steps that we proposed would be to do this study, to apply for a grant, to get the study funded, to do the study of how the regional service could work. But to complete the study, we need somebody that represents Dunstable, give me a Dunstable intro. Okay. And if Rotten is in charge of the Dunstable Fire Department during that period, we may not have somebody objective okay. representing us. But we could retain Mara. I don't think we want, I think the, we always have the meeting ahead for a kind of different reason. Yeah. I think some of the discussion about hiring a consultant was to get outside the region. Yeah, because they didn't want to use any Because companies like MRI have those many people I don't know. Influencer bias. And they thought that uh, they mentioned Arizona or, or, or other states where regionalization is very commonplace, and they have professionals out there who are very used to the process. Where it's not as common, but it's starting to get more common up here, I guess, from what they were saying. So, to use someone who is completely objective would make, would make sense in their minds. I, I think based on the current temperature event, it might be worthwhile to have a total, you know, outside look at what's going on. I just think there's been so much turmoil there over the last handful of years that this might be that chance to do that. And just one person's thought, but I just feel like there's been a lot going on there. And Chief Murray did a really good job and I'm sort of leaving because it, his feelings and sort of things undercut by the things that have happened. So. Yeah, so I mean, with that said, I think we should look for an intern. Uh, I haven't been so far, I probably haven't been in there by the end of the week. So, you need to post for an intern? Uh, it's not common to post for an intern because you need to show the Okay. Most of the time, I'm going to show the dogs and I'm post them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What does it mean for us uh, financially? We have to come up with a pay rate, things like that, that we did previously. Yeah. So we'll pay something like what we're paying. You know, if if the person is a Massachusetts person and they're retired, we're going to be up against the the law that says it's only nine hundred and sixty dollars. Okay. So. You might have a little bit of budget concern, but it's also not for that kind of coverage. So we want to look at increasing other coverage, like if that person can only stay within 20 hours, right? You want to do that for now. Okay. Well, at this point, we only have a certain amount dedicated to that line item. Right. Yeah. So, two. I mean, if you remember when we first hired Chief Murray as an intern, I think he started at 55, and he was. 20 hours of when we first hired him. So he was on 20 hours of yeah. six months or so. So let's say if we hire an intern and he comes on board sometime in December and you start the study, if that's what you want to do. You know, you can stay through the study period and the results of the study come back and say this is something that we want to do with them. We want to do something for that way. Okay. And if not, then I guess you go and do a permanent job for us. How does this impact within being leaving in 30 days of the, new, the acquisition of the new truck? Like he was, I assume, the main point person in that relationship. So is that all on your plate now, or is that all on the captain carrier? Well, he's going to be the captain. He's going to give me a transition memo that outlines some of the next steps. Okay. For everything that needs to be done. The truck is you know, one of the things that's going to be on that list. Yes. Yeah. You know, managing the transition of some of the things he's involved in. Okay. And, you know, I think. If we had a call in the intern, we'd be able to pick up the call. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that's this one. All right, anything else on that? Is there a motion to accept Chief Mary's resignation? So moved. Second. Special. All right, favor. Aye. Uh -huh.
So should we come on to go into the second session? We have one set of minutes from September 28, 2021. Motion to accept I think we should. No, thank you. I'm the acceptance. Okay. Uh, second. Okay, we're uh, all right. We're good. Thank you, Jake. Brian, anything else in your report? Do you want to do a page on this? Um, you guys had a chance to read it? Yeah. yeah. No, I, 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 mean, I think the biggest highlight there is um, you know, Petro's giving us a reason to walk. Offer to the water operators. And, uh, if the water board accepts that and to save some money with Petro over uh, small water systems, they're obviously have a lot more equipment and capability and willingness to respond. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, the corollary to that is you know, they want to have a conversation with us about using the rest of the money to buy into our system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that really helped me as well. Yeah. They've been talking about that for decades. I mean, yeah, who knows if it happened, but I think the water operator that's a real positive thing. Yeah. Yeah, that is because they're excited about that. I mean, small water is like it's like they have to Yeah. No sense of urgency. Um, and see, at least, and of course, we're still we're still struggling with our delegation on the legislation. It's more of the same. I, I was kind of struck by the the liquor license email because I thought we made it pretty clear that of the things that we have on standing right now, that's like the least of our worries. Yeah. But supposedly the easiest to get done. Like, I mean, that's a prop I can't think of eating. Apparently not. <laughs> Well, they could be on a down grade and call it a day. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, I guess that's it. Oh, um, Dave Tully uh, was able to coordinate the demolition of the old house on Green Street. So yeah. thank him for doing that. Thing. And he put up a gate. Okay. Good. Any else? Anyone else? Well, this uh, the model, the house at 91 River Street. I heard the wood chips were taken as well. The wood chips were removed. Yeah. Um, the other thing too is that um, we there was thirty thousand dedicated to take the house down, mm -hmm. and it was done for significantly less. So um, Dave asked about trying to get a quote in order to do some cleanup, like removing the bus and some other stuff that's out there. Yeah. I think it's the the purpose of the apartment. Yeah. Yeah, that bus is just a take a look at the All right. One thing I had was uh the affordable house on TV that was last week. We were supposed to have a meeting this coming Wednesday night, but unfortunately I guess it wasn't posted in time. And I think we all have a copy of the RFP that yeah. uh, the consultant, which is pretty handy. She, uh, she and her firm seem very knowledgeable about where things could go. Um, I think there's still a few, you know, wording choices that I'd like to see ironed out, just because I think we need to be as attractive as possible for a potential developer. Um, but certainly looking for feedback that anybody can pick up along the way. And she seems pretty resourceful. So. We are up against in the area that are several other large projects going. So I don't know if that makes us less attractive or more attractive to other developers. Mm -hmm. Just keep the thought in terms of, well, you can't do more than 60 units down there, supposedly, by the engineering. And there's other projects in that act, and there's a point that's 150. There's one in Pepper that's coming. It's a lot. Yeah. So the density could be both a positive and negative for a rental project. She thought maybe she could break it out or if you're two different, if you separate the parcel, you may be able to incentivize a builder to say, you can build three houses here. If you build us 45 rental units for a four thousand dollar there, and split them out. But she's going to look into those ideas. Okay. 
Uh, the goal is to get it out publicly as an RFP by end of November, but I was also hesitant on that because it was the final boundaries and it was just a push to the bottom of the prior Yeah. Yeah. It's good. So, <laughs> I think going to send it to this board next Thursday. I think they had sent it to you. I do have it. I don't know. I was supposed to have it. I knew it was going to get more. So I thought it was going to get more efficiency. Uh, that was supposed to be at the direction of John Hughes, but I think we were supposed to make that thumbs up on Wednesday night, but now that meeting's been pushed. So, you know, so I can maybe follow up. Yeah. Which is the 26th, right? Yeah. 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 The, the goal was to have like, the select board give its sort of stamp of approval, and then advisory that they're hoping to get just there. Because uh, Matt Mountain wasn't able to join them most recent meeting, so my advisor to see it, and everyone sort of blessing on it. They kind of just say, All right, send it out to the boards and see what we get back. So, let's see. Yes, John. Um, I was thinking the other day, the uh, the woman was it Barrett that did the uh, yes. Barrett. yeah. He, um, I know I signed off on Mr. We, we made a progress plan. What's that? We made a progress plan. Yeah, it has uh, did she ever get? She ghosted us. What's that? She ghosted us. She disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> I gave up calling her and sending her a mess. So, no more money for you. Well, how do you like that? <laughs> Not so much. She, she, she wasted the first part of our money. Yeah. Uh, she wasted the first part of our money by not finishing the product. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yes. Her her she came so it was not what's that? Her recall was not very good. It, it said one thing and then it contradicted what it said. It was just it didn't have a lot of meat. It didn't have any meat. <laughs> I think I, the last communication I had with her, I gave her she actually was chasing me to pay the bill in full. And I said, whoa, 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 hang on. You know, we we have some comments and questions about the report and I made a list and I set it off. And that's the last I ever heard. So um, we, we paid her for some of her efforts. And she came highly recommended, didn't she? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Not anymore. No more. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, how do you like that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's nothing else. We can take a small bonus break. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, it's about it's about there. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All oh, those in favor. Yeah. All right. All right. Good. Thank you all for attending. All right, guys. That's the recommendation.